Hey, this is Andrew Guy, and today we're just talking about science. Again, we're making science a little bit more practical. This week we're working on test-taking skills. Test-taking skills. And it means the difference between getting an A or an F. And nobody wants that F, okay? So our, our subject today, our topic today, we're going to focus on CID. We're talking about variables. There are variables everywhere. Variables are just what? Things that changes or causes a different outcome. Things that we just can't control. All right? Sometimes they're good for an experiment and sometimes they're just not. But in science, variables are extremely important. And we're going to use this particular question to analyze this one and take it apart so you can understand how to recognize what to look for when you're doing a question that has to do with variables, all right? Look at, let, let's zoom in for a little bit, come closer. We have a container, A, B, C, D. We have a mass, uh, we have a mass of chalk before in grams, and then we have volumes of vinegar, and then we had the mass of chalk after, all right? And then our question or answer choices said the beginning of mass of the chalk, the ending mass of the chalk, the volume of vinegar, or the time, all right? So what we're going to do now, we're going to zoom in a little closer. I'm going to be working over there from the, um, the overhead or the Elmo to break it down a little bit so you can understand what's going on. So we are about to get in a little deeper to explain to you how to understand variables and how to recognize them and what is my C, my I, and my D. That is my control, my independent, and my dependent variable. If you're ready, let's get it done. Here we go. Okay, what you need to look for when you're doing um, questions like this. Okay, we do have, first of all, a lengthy um, Passage, so I'm going to scroll down so you can see what's going on. And then at the top, I'm going to zoom in. It says that you're doing a scientific investigation, so I want to underline scientific investigation because part of our test taking tips is to do what? Selective underlining, so we pull out the key things that we need. It said we're doing a scientific investigation to determine the what? The effect of acid on chemical weathering of limestone, all right? It says you place chalk, which, is, which represents what? Calcium carbonate in what? Limestone into four containers. So let me go ahead and write my four containers. They don't have to look pretty, but I just want four containers. So I have my four containers. Then he said I add vinegar to each. So I'm going to put a V, 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 V. I put vinegar in each of them and I let them sit for five minutes. I let them sit for five minutes. So now my C, my I, my D. I'm going to put a little S in here and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Okay? So let's make sure we understand. We're looking for variables. Why? And how do we know we're looking for variables? It says now, after giving the explanation, it said we let it sit for five minutes in a controlled environment. It says what is the independent variable in this experiment? What is the independent variable in this experiment? What I'm going to do here, I'm going to write the word do. Because I have to do this. This is what they, I, they're asking me to do. If I don't do this, I have not answered the question. Let's go down and see what we're working with. My containers are here. I drew them over here so I can understand, give me a brighter picture. This is the chalk. The masses of the chalk in the beginning, before I start the experiment, then this is the masses of the chalk at the end of the experiment. Now, it's asking me for independent variable. I am not sure if you know about this little cartoon. It's called Sid the Science Kid. Sid the Science Kid. And I use that in my um, discussion when we talk about variable because it helps us to understand. And I write C. I, D for Sid. Then I put the little S in there so they can understand. That means the C means control. That's my control variable. And then this is my independent variable. Okay? And then this is my dependent variable. 
Okay? Now, what you need to understand is my control is something that what I want to hold constant. So what is it that I know that's constant in this question? I know that the masses in grams of the chalk at the beginning are controlled because they're all the same. Okay? Then Look at my outcome. My outcome, basically, all these have changed. So in the end, what I started with and what I end up with are different. So 30, 30 now turns to 25, and 30 now turns to 20, and then 15, and then 5. OK, there is almost like a pattern that's happening here. It's actually diminishing the amount or the mass of the chalk. What's causing that? Let's put this. D. Let's make the outcome or the after grams or the mass of my chalk as D for dependent. Because the dependent is the outcome. Remember, I'm going to write it down here. C, I, D. This is my outcome. I is what you, the experimenter, does. So I'm going to write you what you do. Or the input. So what you do or the inputs that you make as an experimenter is going to cause an outcome or we're going to get a change in basically the events that are happening within your experiment. C is what you hold constant. Okay? So now let's go back. What did you do? You changed some things within the experiment. Look. Look at the answer choices. It says the beginning of the mass. It's asking you for I. What did you do? These are constant. So we know we can cross that out and put a C for that. It says the ending. OK. We know that the ending have changed from 30 to 20, 25, 20, 15, and 5. So we can call that what? The D. So we know that's not the answer. It's asking us for the independent variable. So now, let's look at time. It says time. Let's go back up to a question. Our selective underlining tells us that we need to focus on only certain things. It said we let it sit for five minutes. So five minutes was held constant, and every one of them get the same five minutes. So we know we can cross this out and call that a C also. All right? So now let's look at our vinegar. Let's find out why the vinegar is my I. Let's find out. Look at the vinegar. First, I had what? The chalk at 30, all of them were 30 grams. Then I add 10 milliliters of vinegar, and then that changed to what? It removed 5 grams. Then I change and I add 10 more milliliter of what? Vinegar. And then it changes the mass of the chalk, what? To 20. Then I add 50. Then it changes to 15. Then I add 70. Then it changes to 5. So what I did was change the amount of vinegar in the experiment and that resulted into a dependent variable that changes the what? The amount of mass or grams in total of the chalk. So let's recap. So when you do your question, you want to make sure you do selective underlining. Only underline the things that you need to pull out to help you understand the question. When you do that, you want to go back and you want to label as you go. After you label as you go, then you want to make sure that you cross out or get rid of the ones that are definitely the wrong answer. Also, you want to have what's called a M-N-E-M-O-N, -E device. A mnemonic device is a memory tool. A memory tool that helps you recall quickly. Okay? If you have a memory tool that helps you recall quickly, that's called a mnemonic. Our mnemonic in this case was SID, the science kid. SID for control, independent, and dependent variable. My independent variable is the input or what you or I do, the what? The experimenter. What did we do in this experiment? We change the amount of volumes for the vinegar. And the outcome was that it reduces the mass of the chalk.
all right? So that's exactly how you approach a question like that. Look at the readings that you had. You had a long paragraph, but you broke it down to only one, two, three, four, five, six um, things that you need to focus on. Again, I just want to let you know that test taking is nerve wracking for anyone. And it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing, but it can also be a very good thing based on how you approach it. How you approach your test taking says a lot about the results. It says a lot about if it's gonna be an F or it's gonna be an A. The best thing you can do before you take a test is do a brain dump. A brain dump is when you write down everything that you know or need to know about that particular subject, whether it be math, whether it be science, whether it be geometry, whatever it is. It could be U.S. history. Once you know exactly what you have on your mind, get a blank sheet of paper, scratch paper before the exam starts. Get rid of all that information out of your head. Do a brain dump. Clear your head and then you can use those information that you use as your brain dump to come back and guess what? Answer your question. So it's almost like you're just looking, copying off your information from your brain dump and filling it. Test taking should be easy. And that's my way of helping you to understand that you can be successful too if you just use these tips. Again, look, I have my information all labeled. And from my label to my mnemonic device, my mnemonic device was CID, which is control, independent, and dependent variable, which is the outcome. From that, I used that to solve my, my question, and then I realized that the one that I change frequently that I, the experimenter, or you do, is my independent variable. Again, this is Andrew Guy, just trying to make science and learning a little bit more practical. If these videos are helping you, please, Send us a comment and let us know. Take care. Have a good day. Peace.